What happens when Klipsch dresses powered speakers to the nines? <laughs> We're about to find out. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and first off, guilty as charged for the unapologetically poor and some may argue blatantly obvious pun. It's just, it was right there, you know? Sometimes I can't help myself. But please, don't let my proclivity for poor puns push you to clicking the close button. Stick with me because I really do want you to hear all about Klipsch's most ambitious powered speakers yet. They really are remarkable. But whether you're hearing about them for the first time or already pondering the purchase of a pair, I think you're going to want to hear what I have to say and even get a little taste of what these speakers sound like. And hey, if you're new around here, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And if you aren't, well, I hope I can make it a little bit better. I know these speakers have brought some joy to my life over the past several days. Maybe they can for you too. And if you're one of my Knit Nerd Army, it's great to see you again. Friendly reminder to click some buttons of support. And as always, I've got a question coming later in the video that I hope you'll answer down in the comments. Okay, let's dig into the nines. So there are a couple of things that we need to address right off the bat. The first is the nines are large and as it turns out, very much in charge, but we'll get to that. Back to the size. Despite its efforts to give you some sense of scale on its website, Klipsch's photos of the nines and their slightly smaller siblings, the sevens and the fives, don't really capture their bigness, at least relative to most powered speakers. So here you go. I've placed the nines next to an SVS Prime Wireless Pro and an ELAC UB5, shout out Andrew Jones. And as you can see, the nines are not anywhere close to the same zip code as what you would consider a bookshelf speaker. Technically, you'd call them a monitor, although honestly, I thought we'd basically retired that term. Anyway, they are big, which I personally have zero problem with. I just think you should know what you're getting into. And if you do get into the nines, I would highly suggest getting the speaker stands that Klipsch offers to go with them or a suitable set of stands elsewhere. Because while the nines aren't super picky about placement, there's definitely a right way to set them up, which I'll also get to in a moment. The second thing I want to get into right away is that the nines are not a smart speaker. There's no built-in Wi-Fi, no built-in Alexa, no or Siri or Hey Google or any of that stuff. I'll stop short of calling them a dumb speaker because there is a handy companion app that I'll show you soon. But the nines, just like the fives that came out in 2020, aren't trying to be anything remotely like a HomePod or Echo or Nest speaker. So what? are they? Well, the nines themselves are a bigger, badder version of Klipsch's The Fives, which I'll remind you were the first powered speakers to include an HDMI ARC connection. Lots of others have now jumped on that bandwagon, but The Fives did it first and we thank them for creating the category. In fact, we called The Fives the best soundbar alternative for music lovers. Klipsch calls them the best alternative to an AVR and stereo speakers. And I'll give them that, yes, but these days, most folks expect their receiver to have built-in Wi-Fi, Spotify Connect, AirPlay, etc. The five, sevens, and nines don't have that. So they aren't really replacing a modern receiver and speakers, more like the classic mid-century awesomeness of a vintage receiver and a pair of speakers. A category which is super hot, by the way. And if you don't believe me, just go look at what vintage Morantz, Pioneer, and Sansui receivers are fetching on eBay right now. Which leads us nicely into how you connect and interact with the nines. They have every input that you really need and want. There's the HDMI art connection so you can get all your TV audio out through the speakers. There's a USB input which even the KEF LS wireless line doesn't support anymore. Optical digital if your TV doesn't have HDMI arc. And then my personal favorite, a phono input with a ground plug to connect your favorite turntable. Moving magnet cartridges need only apply. If you have a moving coil cartridge, you'll need your own preamp. There's also a subwoofer output, although as I'll discuss soon, the nines take care of bass business just fine on their own. As for control, Klipsch offers an input selector dial and a volume dial on the top of the speaker. And let me tell you, they are a treat to use. That tactile response is awesome and pairs nicely with handling and playing back vinyl on a turntable, of which I did a lot during my testing. 
You also get a remote with input selectors, volume control, sub control volume, and a play pause button. And then there's also the Klipsch app, which is a little rudimentary, but it gets the job done. And it's here that you can pick some sound profiles or create and save your own. I should also point out that the app communicates with the speakers via Bluetooth. So you'll want to be within range to use it. I also wish the app connected a little more quickly, but it is what it is. As for build quality and internal components, the nines are exactly as you'd expect if you're familiar with the Klipsch brand. The cabinets are well built. They definitely pass the knuckle test and they're covered with a gorgeous real wood veneer. I like the magnetic grills that came with this pair, just one of several elements that give me strong Forte 4 vibes. Though to be honest, I mostly just leave them off. The only aesthetic annoyance is this right here. This could have been left on the box and not put on the speaker. I wish this little brag line wasn't on the speaker itself, but I'll live with it. The bottom of the speaker, you have a super robust eight inch midwoofer mated to a one inch titanium dome tweeter set in Klipsch's proprietary Tractrix horn enclosure. As for the amplification, the nines offer 240 watts total power and can peak up to 480 watts, says Klipsch. Now, Klipsch doesn't break down how that power is delivered, but I suspect, given that the speaker cable provided is a four pin design, that it offers discrete amplification for the tweeter and woofer, though I won't hasten to guess how much power goes to each of those drivers. Doesn't really matter though, because Klipsch did the right thing based on how they sound. Setting up the nines is a piece of cake. Everything you need to connect them is included in the box and that uh, involves an HDMI cable as well as an already lengthy speaker cable, but with an extension for that speaker cable that can make it even longer. They even provide a USB cable in the box. Although if you're going to use optical digital, you'll need to provide that yourself. And if you connect a subwoofer, that cable is also on you. Speaking of the subwoofer output, I haven't heard back from Klipsch about what the crossover point is just yet, but the speakers do sense when a sub is connected and set a high pass filter for the speakers and a low pass for the sub. So that being the case, you don't get to run the nines full range and then dial in the sub just to handle the lowest octave. Klipsch kind of grabs the reins to handle the blend of the two, which they kind of had to do because of this dynamic bass feature that they have, which I'll discuss more in a moment. As for the placement that I mentioned earlier, the speakers are pretty versatile in terms of how far apart from each other you can place them. And you even have some wiggle room for their height. Now, my BDI cabinet here places the bottom of the speakers 28 inches off the floor, but a speaker stand somewhere between 24 and 30 inches is probably fine. But you really, really need to pull these speakers about 18 inches from the wall. That's measured from the back of the speaker, a foot at the very least. And that's to get the best bass response, sound stage, and imaging. That's why I think having stands for them is gonna be the best choice for a lot of folks. Oh, one last setup thing that I love. The main speaker with all the connections and controls, it can be the left speaker or the right speaker thanks to a switch on the back, which was essential for me since the HDMI ports on my Sony A95K TV are on the left, as was my turntable. Now, we're about to get into sound quality, but first a quick word on how I tested the nines. I played back a lot of vinyl using an EAT turntable connected to both the nines own phono preamp input and to an outboard phono pre from Cambridge Audio. I also connected a laptop via USB and I used the Sony A95K as a source for both movies and music streaming as well. I did test the Bluetooth audio connection for posterity, but I rarely used it. I had hoped that I would have had a WIM Pro streamer here in time for testing, but it didn't make it. I do recommend checking one out though, as I'm hearing great things about it from lots of folks, including Digital Trends' own Simon Cohen. If you wanna stream at the highest quality with maximum convenience, go with the WIM Pro. We'll leave a link for it down in the description. I mean, it's Sonos-like interface is possibly gonna get them sued, I hope not, but it sure does work awesome. Oh, one last note, the nines do have a built-in DAC, but they only accept PCM audio. So be sure to set your TV's output to PCM. And if you wanna listen to high res music, you'll need to handle converting it to PCM before you output to the speakers. They don't decode FLAC or MQA, for example.
Okay, thanks for hanging with me. I think all that stuff was important to talk about, but let's get to the goods, shall we? How do they sound? Y'all, they sound awesome. I've enjoyed these speakers so, so much. I haven't had this much fun since we had the Klipsch Forte 4 in here. They have that Klipsch Heritage speaker vibe just nailed. Now, mine definitely benefited from a little break-in. I know there are some speaker break-in deniers out there, and that's fine. All I'm saying is that the treble had just a touch more bite than I wanted it to with the speakers straight out of the box. I ran some burn-in noise on them for about 15 hours overnight, and that's all it took. I came back to them, listened to the exact same tracks I had the night before, and the treble was noticeably smoother. My ears didn't relax into them. The sound profile actually changed. Do I have measurements to back that up? Nope, I'm sorry, I don't. But I mean, see for yourself and let me know what you think. Anyway, there's not much I don't love about listening to these speakers. They are a riot of fun. Can they get loud? They're clips. yes, they get loud. And they do it without distortion. Can they get loud without being fatiguing? For me, yes. More sensitive listeners might find the highs have a bit more sparkle than is to their taste. These speakers don't have silk dome tweeter characteristics, but that doesn't mean the treble isn't sweet. It is, a little. But even more, they are articulate AF. The, the transients just leap out from the speakers. Every drummer's brush stroke, every click of a drumstick on a cymbal, every brass overtone, every guitar pick, it's all resolved with remarkably precise attack. And the decay is supernatural as well. The resolution of detail is just a treat. But as delicate as they can be in the treble and mid-range, they can also grind hard as well. I use Dire Straits Love Over Gold on vinyl, which is rich with dynamics and rife with guitar distortion, punchy bass guitar, and thumping kick drum. And the nines brought Telegraph Road, for instance, to life in a way I've not heard in some time. I felt the same way listening to Fleetwood Mac's Rumors record, particularly the song The Chain, which has steely guitar and thumping kick drum at the intro, followed by transcendent, borderline angelic vocals that were mic'd and mixed so that they can leap out of the speakers and into the room when played through the right speakers. Definitely one of my go-to tracks and definitely a track that has historically sounded great through other clip speakers. And the nines, once again, delivered that heritage series sound I was looking for. I do have to mention though that the nines phono preamp is fine. It's decent, but if vinyl listening is gonna be a big part of how you use the nines, an outboard phono pre would be a nice upgrade. Even something inexpensive like the Sheet Manny or Manny 2 would be a step up, or this $350 Cambridge Duo sounds fantastic as well. Plus, it's got a great headphone amp in it too. For hip hop and R&B, the nines brought deep, resonant, tuneful bass with plenty of punch. I never wanted a subwoofer for music listening. It just wasn't necessary. I didn't really need Klipsch's dynamic bass feature either, which is meant to keep the bass at a satisfying level even at lower volumes. But for me, it just wasn't necessary. But if you want to feel that lower octave at all volume levels, the dynamic bass feature does exactly that. The only time a subwoofer was ever really a bonus was when watching movies. If you really wanna feel your seat shake, then a sub can help deliver a bit more of that ultra low, visceral, butt-shaking bass. And I'm sure Klipsch will be happy to sell you a sub, maybe one from its brand new reference line. But honestly, friends, I'd try the nines without a sub first. You may well find that you don't want one. They just sound so powerful and rich all on their own. Perhaps the greatest endorsement I can give the nines is that I'm actually enjoying them just a bit more than a full size set of reference Premier Tower speakers mated to a massive Marantz SR8015 AB receiver. The nines are just, they're easier to set up, easier to place and easier to enjoy, and they sound excellent. They're just a ton of fun, but they also retain an air of refinement that I don't think a lot of folks are gonna expect. So in the neighborhood of 1500 bucks a pair, are the nines worth it? I'd say yes, absolutely. To get this kind of sound from a separate pair of speakers and an AVR is not only going to require more hassle and setup effort, but just as much, if not more, money. And honestly, the resulting sound of the separates and the speakers 
isn't likely to exceed or even match what the Nines can do on their own. The Nines are simply one of the best one box audio solutions on the market, period. I'm gonna enjoy listening to these things for years. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think about the Nines, specifically the size and the price? Let me know down in the comments if you think they're overkill or just killer. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.